Hello everyone, today we are going to look at spacecraft weapons. So I'm presuming that you are all understand how personal combat weapons work. So I'm not going to go through rolling how to hit, how range works and ammunition and clips and things like that. Um, I'm just going to stick with what makes spacecraft combat distinctive. So, a few things first. Firstly, there are no cover rules in spacecraft combat. There are things that can give you negatives to hit, like firing through a dust cloud or an object, but for example, there is no entrenched cover which makes you immune to critical hits. Instead, during spacecraft combat, there's the presumption that attribute damage is going to be repaired mid-combat, unlike in personal combat where it's only repaired afterwards. Another thing is that weapons have facings and firing arcs. So you've got here, you've got most weapons can fire in the front and the side as shown by this red sort of area. So some weapons can just go in the front, this green area, and just some in the rear. So you're gonna look at batteries primarily can fire side and front by default. Ordnance, a lot of it is front only and you can get mines which are just rear. You can also apply modifications to your weapons which can dictate their facing. For example, batteries can be set to only forward fire and that gives an increased critical damage um, or batteries can be set to only sides, so their broadside, and they gain bonus range. So weapon systems in spa for spacecraft are primarily split up into three categories you have batteries guns and they're fired with your gunnery system roll you have ordnance which covers warheads and fighters so warheads are controlled from operations and fighters are controlled from command then you have boarding party and that's also part of command. So I'm gonna walk through each of these. We're gonna start with batteries um, as they are probably the simplest and the most straightforward. So you've got here in gunnery, you've got volley, lead the target, bombardment for firing. They give you different bonuses. You got preparation and that's used for reloading. Batteries primarily have infinite clips but they will be need, re need to be reloaded as their ammunition runs low um, then the next weapon system we have is ordnance now this has to be talked about in two different groups you got warheads and fighters but both of these function in a very similar way to drones so let's have a look at warheads first so Warheads are launched as part of operations. You've got Dumbfire and Seeker. And the way that ordnance works is, we'll just use these tokens, is they each have a move stat, just like drones, and when they're launched, they can be placed, they must be placed within that movement amount. So let's say you've got move three, you can place them within this category here. Okay, and then each turn afterwards in your second system roll phase when you make an operations roll warheads can move and attack so let's say this one's got move three so the first turn it launches to there and then the next turn it can move to here and can make an attack on any adjacent enemy here and that means that ordnance can fly around and do quite you know complicated maneuvers now, ordnance though, unlike warheads, unlike um, drones, if they attack and they hit the target, they're destroyed. Because the warheads just hit the ship and exploded. Okay? If your enemy ship has point defense lasers, which is a specific type of battery, it says that if a warhead misses them with an attack roll, they are destroyed. And that represents the point defense weapons shooting them down. So this. Warhead just launched and then attacked and if it hits it blows up and if it misses and this has a point defense weapon um, 
um, it is also destroyed. But if it misses and they don't have a point defense weapon, then it stays there. And that represents the warhead sort of whizzing past the ship and then coming back around for another go. Now, you've got Dumbfire and Seeker are the two ways of launching warheads. Dumbfire is you launch your warhead and you can attack the turn you launch. But if it fails to hit, it is automatically destroyed at the end of the turn. And that basically represents you firing at point blank range. Okay, you're there, they're there, you just fire straight into them, make an attack roll, and it's destroyed. Okay, it's point and shoot. And the next one you've got is Seeker, and this is the one where you can launch. So you launch, but it cannot attack during the turn that it launched. But it gains lock on plus six. And this is important because this means that warheads not only can keep moving each turn until they hit their target, warheads have quite a low to hit score and so that lock on plus six is important. So you'll find that you'll often launch ordnance and then you're trying to maintain the lock on effect and this is gained through the calibrate to try and hit them at that right point. Okay, so that's, that's, that's how warheads work. They're often high crit, high strong hit range, but you have limited ones. Um, so let's say you've only got like a warhead with three bodies. Um, unlike um, drones, warheads, each bodies act individually. So if you launch each three of these, they can go off in separate directions and attack different targets. The next type of ordnance you've got are fighters. Now fighters are launched as part of your direct crew um, system role. And we'll use these tokens. They function a lot more like standard drones. They move and shoot each turn. Um, and similar to warheads, they cannot attack during the turn. Normally they cannot attack during the turn they are launched. So you launch them, they fire as a group. So this group here, let's say, has two bodies and guns on it. They can attack that. They're going to gain their three from normal attack roll, plus one because they have an extra body, and they just attack as a group, and they roll like that. And they are really good because they can just fly in and just pepper the enemy with lots of shots, or they can shoot down warheads off a covering fire and things like that. The last type of weapon you've got is a little more obscure and you're going to find that NPCs use it a lot more than PCs and that's boarding parties. So on your spacecraft sheet here, you have boarding party. And this is a little bit like how your character is all, has the default, has a mind and limbs to attack with. Um, you always have a boarding party. Now certain things apply a effect called the boarded effect to your opponent. Um, and this could be, for example, a, a Nephilim missile full of little horrors and as it punctures your ship's hull, it explodes with eggs of little monsters that attack your ship. And that could be you gain a boarded effect. Now, unlike a lot of effects, boarded can be applied up to five times to a ship. So each time you get affected, you want to colour in one of these little things. Now the rules for them can be seen here on your reference sheet. And the way that they work is that at the start of your turn, during the command phase, the enemy ship who apply the effect to you can make an attack roll against you. And they use these stats here. Okay? Now, boarded parties, they gain plus hit equal to your crew, so you've got better crew, they're more accurate. Um, they don't deal shield damage, and they deal one crit damage. But an important point of note is that they bypass your standard armor. And they just, they make an attack. So you roll your three dice, you only roll it once, okay? You add your crew, and if you hit their defense versus boarded, you can apply a crit damage, which would be one damage to an attribute, bypassing their armor, chips away at them. That's a pretty bad roll, so you're quite likely to have missed. 
When you miss with a boarded effect roll, you lose one of these effects. And this represents the, the enemy fighting you off. Now, this functions quite differently to a lot of other um, weapon systems and ships. And it's quite a simplified way of dealing with being boarded. And the reason it's done this way where the whole combat, like even though you've got lots of people fighting through hallways with different weapons and maybe even the PCs are involved, is because you don't want to slow down combat. So it's just one roll. If it fails, it represents the defenders fought you off. Um, if it succeeds, you deal damage. Now you can defend versus boarded. Um, and the way that you can do that is damage control, which is an engineering role. And that gives you armor versus boarded plus one for um, until your next turn. You can also do a direct crew, which is armor versus boarded plus one. So if you really want to fight it off, someone in your party can make a direct crew and a damage control. And that represents your PCs getting in there and fighting off the boarded enemies. And that is, in a nutshell, how spacecraft weapons work.